My name is Anne Lassen, and I'm a horticulturist and a groundskeeper here at Rock Creek. And I have been into uh, plants and growing things since a very small child, and that's what got me into beekeeping. Well, bees are important not only because they give us fabulous honey, but because they carry on all the pollination. And so if you don't have bees, then you can't have your vegetables or your fruits. I am bringing honeybees out here on Saturday, yeah. I actually offered it because when I was here, I saw the garden and realized too, when all the blooming was going on with all the trees that were in bloom, we had a, millions of blooms and there just weren't any bees out here. And I thought it would be a great place to have bees. And so I just offered to put some beehives out here and uh, they were able to get the okay to go ahead and try it this year. What honeybees like and need, we think, and there's still a lot of unknowns, we think that honeybees benefit from having a diverse diet. I'm Glenn Andreessen. I teach a beginning backyard beekeeping class quarterly at PCC. A strong hive looks like there's just more bees than, sh than should belong in there. And it's a condition that we really like to see because the more bees you have, the more honey you're going to get. The flip side is the more bees that you have, the greater the likelihood is that they will swarm. So anyone can raise bees. It's not very hard to do, at least the way that I do it. I just harvest once a year at the end, right before, you know, when fall hits. Um, so I let the bees do their thing all year, all summer long, and then I harvest in the fall. So I use the Langstroth hive. It's the, I think it's the easiest way to keep bees because the parts are interchangeable. The, the bees don't glue it to the sides and and it's been virtually unchanged for 150 years. Well, I found a bee breeder that is here in the Portland area, and they are using a new variety or a newer variety of bee that seems to be very hardy and adapting well and not having the problems with the collapse. So they have tried out some new um, different species of bees that are a little bit hardier. The bee population in the United States has been affected by what we just as a catch-all call colony collapse disorder and the losses have been relatively consistent since it was first really noticed in the I can't remember exactly, 2004, 2005 or so. So they'll be healthy in the fall when they're kind of put away for the winter. And then in the spring, the whole hive can be dead. And um, they're calling that, you know, colony collapse. But they haven't really figured out exactly what's causing it or how to keep it from happening. The experts aren't any closer really on figuring out what is causing it. It's no doubt a combination of things. I think that the still biggest cause is the parasitic mite called Varroa, the Varroa destructor mite. And so there are some natural things. They naturally will die and there will be some natural colony collapse, but we've just seen it in such great numbers. And that's the issue here is that when you have half of your bees die, then that's a problem. There just won't be enough bees to pollinate. And can you imagine if we had to pay people to go out and try to pollinate these plants? So bees do an incredible service to us and they do it all for free and they do it so well that um, we just really can't replace bees. So we need to give them a helping hand by, um, you know, 
producing them, putting out hives, moving hives around to places where we need them to do pollination, and just doing what we can to help them out.